Hey guys, and welcome to subtopic 3.9 on triglycerides. For our first science understanding, edible oils and fats are esters of propan 123 triol or glycerol, and various carboxylic acids. You'll need to be able to draw the structural formula of an edible oil or fat given the structural formula or formulae of the carboxylic acid or acids uh, from which it is derived. Triglycerides are fats and oils which are formed from Firstly, propane 123 triol, also known as glycerol, as well as three long chain carboxylic acids. We term these typically fatty acids. Fatty acids are usually unbranched and they contain an even number of carbon atoms. Here are some examples of some saturated fatty acids. So we've got lauric acid in coconuts, myristic acid in nutmeg, and so on. Triglycerides have a general form. We can think of triglycerides as triesters because they consist of three ester functional groups. We can see one here, here, and here. The red component comes from the propane 123 triol, and then these blue components here come from our fatty acids. Because triglycerides can be classified as triesters, we could form triglycerides through esterification reactions. You don't need to know how to write these equations, but this is here just for reference. Over to the left we have our glycerol or propan-1,2,3-triol reacting with three fatty acids. These here are all the same, and you can see the formation of an ester functional group um, as they join together, and in doing so they will also release water. But in this case, because there are three ester groups, it will release three water molecules. Triglycerides can be classified as simple or mixed triglycerides. A simple triglyceride consists of three fatty acid chains that are all identical to one another. So tristerin is an example of it. A mixed triglyceride, however, can contain three different fatty acid chains, um, which can differ in their length as well as their saturated or unsaturated characteristics. For the next science understanding, Triglycerides may be saturated or unsaturated. Describe and explain the use of a solution of bromine or iodine to determine the degree of unsaturation of a compound and draw the structural formula of the reaction product. Also explain how the degree of unsaturation causes differences in the melting points of edible oils and fats. As mentioned before, triglycerides can be classified as saturated or unsaturated. Saturated fats or triglycerides consist of only single carbon to carbon bonds and in doing so they form very linear chains as you can see below. Unsaturated fats or triglycerides on the other hand consist of at least one carbon to carbon double bond within the chain. These carbon to carbon double bonds introduce a kink within the chain and the reason being is because around that carbon to carbon double bond the hydrocarbon groups are actually bonding within the same side. This is what we call the cis form. This in turn affects how closely these triglyceride molecules can align with one another and therefore affects its properties such as its melting and boiling points. To test for the degree of unsaturation, we can use two different tests. The first one is called a bromine test. Bromine water is orange in color and what it can do is it can react with any carbon to carbon double bonds as well as triple bonds and it can undergo addition reactions with the bromine. This effectively decolorizes the bromine solution. On this slide we can see here that there are two test tubes. One test tube consists of an alkane, the other an alkene. We've added some bromine water to this mixture as well and by shaking the contents what we could see is that the alkane results in no observable change. However the alkene we can see that the bromine water has become decolorized. We've now got an example question here. Draw the structural formula of the product when the following triglyceride reacts with bromine. Our triglyceride here, we can see it consists of one carbon to carbon double bond. So bromine can react and we can say that bromine adds across the double bond. So one bromine will be added to this carbon, one to this carbon, and one of those bonds within the double bond is broken. So our product, we can see over to the right, now consists of only single carbon to carbon bonds, making it saturated, but now these two carbons consist of those bromine atoms. 
To specifically look at the degree of unsaturation, we can talk about what we call the bromine number. This is the mass of bromine that reacts with exactly 100 grams of a triglyceride. So the greater degree of unsaturation would result in a higher bromine number. It's worthwhile noting that one mole of double bonds reacts with one mole of bromine. The other test that we could use is an iodine test. Iodine is typically a purplish brownish color and iodine is decolorized upon its reaction with any carbon to carbon double or triple bonds. To determine the degree of unsaturation we can look at the iodine number. So like the bromine number this is going to be the mass of iodine that reacts with exactly 100 grams of a triglyceride. And again, the greater the degree of unsaturation, the higher the iodine number. In terms of the effect that the degree of unsaturation has on the melting point, we can say the less unsaturated a triglyceride is, the higher its melting point. Or alternatively, the more saturated a triglyceride is, the higher the melting point. In this diagram below, we can see that there are a range of saturated triglycerides, and we can see that they can all be aligned very closely to one another, and so this close alignment actually allows for the formation of very strong dispersion forces. So it's not just the size or the mass of a molecule, but it's also got to do with the ability for them to line up or associate very close to one another. On the other hand, if we consider an unsaturated triglyceride, the presence of these carbon to carbon double bonds introduces these so called kinks within the chain, and these kinks actually make it more difficult for the triglycerides to actually uh, arrange themselves closely to one another. And so, what this will do is reduce the strength of the dispersion forces, resulting in a lower melting point. So, in other words, the greater the unsaturation, the lower its melting point. In terms of the words fats and oils, fats are typically assigned to triglycerides that are solid at room temperature. Oils are triglycerides that are liquids at room temperature. That concludes part one for 3.9 triglycerides. I'll see you guys in the next video.